for stopping by for today's video, guys, and make sure that you check out our sponsor as well, Gunspot.com. Gunspot.com, it's just, say, a uh, pro to a listing and auction website. And unlike other unnamed auction websites, gun broker, you're never going to pay out-of-state sales tax, and the fees are very low. There's no hidden buyer's fees, and there is a very low seller fee, like 1% or something, and there's a pro to a blog and news and just all types of community things going on as well. So check them out, gunspot.com. Now let's get on with the video. Hey guys, Dustin here, and we are still at the range of National Association for Gun Rights with our KRG Sodic build. Now, earlier videos, you'll find us building all the accessories and good stuff, but now it is optics times. So we have Nick here with ZCO, this is Zero Compromise Optic, and uh, you're big in the PRS world, right? Uh, we're big in all the competition type of thing. There, Where it matters. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, there's a Precision Rifle Series, uh, excellent organization and then um, NRL, the, um, another organization that does a whole lot of competitions all around the, the awesome. country and everything. So yeah. It's, so when um, quality matters and accuracy yeah. is, is, is key, You'll find some ZC, ZCO optics, yes. right? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So we have this very fancy one here, and just give us the rundown. So, the company. so let me tell you about it. Yeah, so this is um, one of our flagship um, scopes. This is the ZCO five to twenty-seven. So it has a twenty-seven low magnification of five, and mm -hmm. then all the way up to twenty-seven magnification, mm -hmm. and has a fifty-six millimeter objective lens to get mm -hmm. you excellent uh, optical performance with your resolution and mm -hmm. everything else that goes into this scope. And then our tube? So the tube is actually a 36 millimeter main tube. And here's the, the reason why we came up with the name is we had to go to a larger main tube so that we could maximize the performance, not just optically, but also the mechanical adjustments in the scope. Mm -hmm. And so on this one here, we actually have 35 mils of elevation adjustment inside of the scope. That's a huge adjustment range. Right. And what that does for you, as it get, allows you to shoot further and further distances out there, uh, especially with this rifle that you're going to be putting this on, 6.5 Creed, you're going to be punching out a long, long ways with this, and you need as much elevation adjustment as you can have okay. on there. Part of our company philosophy was just to build the finest rifle scope in the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we drew on. Uh, our cumulative background, so everybody involved in the company. And, and we're a fairly young company, right? We've been around shipping scopes now for only about four years. Wow. But we are placing ourselves at the very top of the heap in the rifle scope industry yeah. against, you know, companies that have been around for a lot longer than that. So we kind of came out of the park uh, swinging for the top spot in the industry, and that's where we wanted to be. So um, the goal was to build the best rifle scopes and so how do you define the best uh, the best optically the me best mechanically the most robust mm -hmm. we wanted all of that so we, we really went to great lengths to look at how a rifle scope was built internally all the adjustments and mm -hmm. we found many ways to make our scopes the most durable in the industry to have the finest optical performance bar none in the industry and be the most robust, durable scope possible. So, so we have mill adjustments. Mill adjustments. And then our reticle, that, that was something you designed, huh? The Impact 3 reticle, yes, uh, was pretty much my baby, one of the projects that I got to do for the company. And the one that you have is called the Impact 3X. Okay. And it's just a slight modification off of the Impact 3. Mm -hmm. um, and that came about from uh, many competitors, wanted just a slight little modification. So we accommodated that um, to, help make uh, it even better for the shooters that uh, that wanted it. So we'll put that reticle on the screen for the viewers here. And uh, you know, if they're used to just a standard duplex, this sucker is gonna look really busy. Yeah, you know, it, it may look busy at initial glance, but mm -hmm. when you actually start using this, right. transitioning from one target to the next, you're gonna find your hold points are quick and easy to find mm -hmm. in that reticle. And it is actually 
unobtrusive to your background image because of the way the dots and the circles are designed and their sizes. You could slap it on here and not even zero it. And as long as we could see our bullet splash, we could just look at that first one and we could have a hold and make our hit yeah, anywhere. Exactly, yeah. So your reticle is essentially a ruler within right. your scope because mm -hmm. your turrets match up with the mill graduation and the reticle. Yeah, it's a pretty neat design. And yep. then, so we have our parallax adjustment here. We have uh, it's illumination too on the yeah. side. This is... Um, one of the most advanced illumination systems yeah. on a tactical style scope okay. um, that, that's been manufactured from anybody. So uh, on this rheostat, uh, you yeah. notice it, it turns one direction just a short little ways. And yeah, that's from those guys that are using the night vision type equipment in front of their day optic. Oh, so the illumination fancy. is super bright. You won't even be able to see it with your naked eye, but it'll pick it up through the um, through the night vision type equipment. Okay. Then if you also roll it forward, mm -hmm. it'll get super, super bright, yep, bright to the red. point that you can see it even under daylight conditions. Mm -hmm. So with that constant rheostat, it'll go down super, super dim. So as the light just starts to fade, if you want that a little bit of illumination to pick up your reticle easier, mm -hmm. it's not gonna wash out the rest of your image. No, it doesn't. That. Now what makes it even more advanced is that you as the end user, can pull off this battery cap, pull okay. the battery out, and there's two pin switches inside of there. One is to change the reticle illumination to the color green, if no you would prefer way. green illumination. And the other is to either activate or deactivate what we call AIM. AIM stands for Automatic Illumination Management. What that does for you when it is turned on, when that scope senses that it is outside of a normal shooting position, either onto its side or straight up like or down, rack. Okay. it'll turn off the illumination to save your battery life. That is awesome. Yep. Because I leave stuff on by accident all the time. Forget to turn it on. All right, so when you're done shooting, you stand your rifle up into the gun rack, it'll automatically shut off that illumination to save your battery life. And it also has some timing features in there as well. Awesome. If your rifle scope is completely still for yeah. two minutes, it'll shut down, but then wow. the slightest little wiggle yeah. will bring the illumination right back on. Or if it is completely motionless for two hours, it'll go into a sleep okay. mode. And from there, you need to turn it to the off position and then back on, and it'll come back on as well. That and is all awesome. that is designed to make sure that you can count on that illumination being there when you need it the most. Right, I've never heard of someone, go, you know, a manufacturer going into that much depth. And yep. it's not like it's a click illumination. It's, it, this is an adjustable dial fader in yes. a way. Yep, so you can that really fine tune the illumination to the right intensity that you want it to have. And like I said, with that pin switch, you can turn off that aim function. So say that you're a military or law enforcement sniper mm -hmm. and you want it to stay on regardless, no matter what, okay. you can disable that, turn on your illumination, and it's just gonna stay on. One of the other things with uh, the Rifescope design is we put a lot of emphasis on our eyepiece design. Okay. So our eyepiece does have uh, some of the more advanced uh, concepts to it. So what those do for the shooter is you'll notice when you actually get this thing mounted, and we're ready to shoot. When you get behind that scope, you're gonna find it is super easy to get your full sight picture. I'm smiling already thinking yeah. about it. <laughs> so one of the one of the first comments that we started hearing from end users when we started shipping out scopes is that it's like going from your other optic where you have a typical small kind of tube TV to looking uh -huh. through this is that. almost like a widescreen view to it. Nice. It's just very encompassing image quality, your what, what people often call is your eye box. Right. How easy mm -hmm. it is, is it to get behind the scope is very, very forgiving and very generous. Mm -hmm. And that is very important for a shooter, especially a competition shooter. Exactly. When you're in different odd kind of positions, you can get your sight picture real fast yeah. and easy. You're not fighting to, right. to get that sight Shave picture. Shave those seconds off. Yep, absolutely. So we do have a locking diopter with this really? diopter. So once okay. you get this uh, set, what that does is it focuses the reticle to your eye, mm -hmm. right? Once you get it set for your eye, you can lock this down this, this trim ring back here and you don't have to worry about it bumping, especially if you have a right. scope cap on there that might get twisted left or right. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna change your um, reticle focus for you. We have a built-in magnification throw lever. How nice and smooth is that to turn? It's not overly stiff. Right. It's I've not seen loose. some. You're gonna. It's like you're gonna move your mount. <laughs> right. Yep. And so we have that uh, put on there, so it's just enough to where you can make quick adjustments, and you don't really need that extended cattail to make your magnification changes. Your turrets are locking, so when you make an adjustment, if you don't want them to move, you can lock them back down, and you don't have to worry about anything getting adjusted 
on you, uh, especially competitors have ran into that problem oh, sure. shooting through tight little barricade portholes mm -hmm. where you're pushing your rifle up against something and that can cause um, your turrets to spin if they don't have a lock or a cap type of a system. That's a must have. Them. So um, we do have the, the lock feature and it's a you know just a very simple thing uh, lift up to unlock yep. make your adjustment and you don't have to lift it you know very very far it's nice and positive a little short mm -hmm. little adjustment and then you can dial your turrets whatever you want them adjusted for excellent so yeah. that is awesome so step one we go ahead and mount this step two we get to shoot it heck yes man <laughs> that, that's the, the fun stuff i've had lots of viewers ask you know how i mount a scope and everything else so this will be great we have a professional here to show us how to properly mount it you're going to pick up some fun tips or at least it may not be fun very useful tips there we go <laughs> so if you want to know more about it and get kind of get into the real nuts and bolts Click the link down below and we'll have an unlisted video where we're just going to get more in depth with this scope.